I had always been at odds with my in-laws, so my husband John suggested we keep our distance from them. However, I thought we couldn't avoid them forever. Every time I proposed visiting his parents, John would firmly decline. He said it was because his mom, Susan, wasn't feeling well. Suspicious, I decided to visit them secretly and was shocked to find an unfamiliar woman and child with John. You should leave your current wife and be with her, Susan said, holding the stranger's child, urging John. Hearing this, I made up my mind. All right, if you want a divorce, I'll give it to you, but you'll pay a hefty price for it. My name is Elizabeth. I've been married to John, who's 10 years younger, for five years. Truth be told, I've never really gotten along with his parents. From the moment I met them, his dad and Susan never welcomed me. Especially Susan, who is always so sharp-tongued. An older woman like you probably wants to control John, right? I think a submissive and supportive wife would suit John better. Being older and career-driven, I wasn't the cute, submissive wife they had envisioned for their son. They begrudgingly accepted our marriage, but even right before our wedding, they kept asking John if there wasn't someone better for him. Still, I believed that, with time, our differences would fade. I made efforts to bond with them. Susan, could you teach me how to make meatloaf? I want to learn your family recipe. But no matter how I tried, Susan never warmed up to me. Elizabeth, you can't even make meatloaf. This is why career women are no good. I'm sorry. Yet, I persisted and kept visiting. Then, one day, I overheard Susan talking to John. Hey, John, is Elizabeth pregnant yet? Maybe she's too old. It's infuriating to think we might not have grandchildren because of her. Susan started blatantly ignoring me. Whenever I visited, she'd only talk to John. If I tried to engage, she'd pretend not to hear and escape to the kitchen. Being ignored was even more painful than her snide remarks. Seeing my distress, John made a suggestion. Elizabeth, how about we stop visiting my parents for a while? But won't Susan miss us? That's why I'll go alone. Honestly, I think it's better for both of us. I understood what John was trying to say. Susan probably didn't want to spend time with me either. From then on, John often visited his parents alone on weekends while I stayed at home. But I felt this couldn't go on forever. John, I think it's time for me to visit your parents again. What? John replied, sounding alarmed. I told you, you don't have to push yourself. But we can't be estranged forever. Their family, after all. John then looked serious and said, The truth is, Mom's health has been deteriorating recently. What? So, I don't want to stress her out. You know, she'll worry more if you're there. I had no idea. I hadn't seen Susan in so long. I was unaware of her health issues. On a Saturday morning, as usual, John headed to his parents' house alone. I'll be back soon. Okay, send my regards to Susan. After seeing James off, I couldn't shake off my unease. How bad was Susan's health, really? Considering she's in her late 60s, she might not have much time left. Despite our differences, should I really continue avoiding her? Especially now, when she might need help. No matter how much Susan dislikes me, there must be something I can do. Determined to face the situation, I took some get well gifts and headed to James' family home. As I approached, I heard cheerful voices from the garden. Peeking through the trees, I saw James, his dad, an unfamiliar woman, and a baby. James was playfully entertaining the baby while his dad watched with a smile. Who were they? Maybe some distant relatives? But they seemed too close. Then, Susan took the baby from James and cooed. Look, it's Grandma! Grandma? Holding the baby tenderly, Susan said to James, When are you leaving, Elizabeth? Marry Lisa soon and give me more grandkids. The woman, Lisa, replied with a smile, 
We only get to see you on weekends now, both the baby and I want to live with James soon. I'm so glad we get along, Lisa. James chuckled. Hold on. <laughs> if I bring up divorce now, Elizabeth might demand compensation. I need more time to prepare. Prepare? Why not just dump that useless wife of yours? I understand how you feel, Mom. I'm just getting ready. What do you mean? I get where you're coming from, Mom. I've been telling my co-workers and friends how terrible Elizabeth is as a wife, how she never visits your house, doesn't cook, neglects the home, and spends recklessly. If everyone sympathizes with me, it'll be the perfect reason for divorce, right? Wow, James, you've thought this through. James, you're so smart. Hearing their conversation, I was in shock. James had been cheating for a while and even had a child with his mistress. And his parents seemed to prefer her over me. This betrayal was more than enough to engulf me in rage. Painting me as the bad guy to justify a divorce? I won't let that happen. I clenched the gifts I brought for Susan. First, I needed evidence of his affair. I had to find out when it started and how often they met. I'd hire a private investigator to get all the details. At home, I stopped cooking for James. Where's my dinner? He asked, puzzled, when he returned from work. Oh, I was too busy to cook today. Here you go. I handed him instant ramen. He looked annoyed for a moment, but quickly brushed it off. All right, I guess we all have those days. <laughs> After recalling his plan to paint me as the bad one, James probably thought it was convenient for him. From that day on, whether there was no meal prepared or his shirts weren't ironed, James never complained. It suited me, who didn't want to do anything for him. James seemed pleased, thinking everything was going according to plan. But in reality, everything was going according to mine. As a final step, I checked his card statements and withdrew an amount equivalent to what he might have spent on his mistress. At this point, even James would notice. Sure enough, he confronted me on Friday night. Elizabeth, what did you do with our money? Oh, the money in our bank account? I had some things to buy, so I used it. Hearing this, James smirked. All right, I have something important to discuss with you. It's late now, so how about tomorrow? Isn't tomorrow when you visit your parents? How about discussing it at their place? That might be quicker. The next day, for the first time in a while, both James and I visited his family home. His parents, probably informed by him about our talk, greeted me warmly. Elizabeth, it's been a while. Hello, Susan. After exchanging pleasantries, we got straight to the point. James immediately showed me the divorce papers. I've had enough. Let's split up. Feigning ignorance, I asked. Had enough of what? Your recent behavior. You don't cook. You don't do chores. You've completely abandoned your role as a wife. And you used our money without telling me. I remained silent. And James, looking down at me, said, Look. I'm generous. If you agree to the divorce quietly, I won't ask for compensation. Deal? That's when I finally spoke up. I agree to the divorce, but I won't be fooled about the compensation. Hearing this, James and Susan exchanged glances. Well, if you want to show sincerity, we might accept the money. Yes, it's better to settle things properly. They seemed thrilled at the unexpected prospect of getting compensation. Then the doorbell rang. Who could that be? I headed to the door before Susan could react. The man who arrived handed out his business cards to everyone. I'm this kind of person. A lawyer? James exclaimed in surprise and I explained. I anticipated this, so I called him. If you're going to claim compensation, it's best to note the appropriate amount, right? James and Susan, though bewildered, agreed to the lawyer's presence. I've explained everything to Mr. Smith here. At my prompt, Mr. Smith quickly produced an invoice. 
Given the circumstances, the claimable compensation would be at least 50000 50000 James and Susan were in shock. Is this amount acceptable? When Mr. Smith asked, James replied, Of course! Then please make the payment. Mr. Smith handed the invoice to James. What? James was suddenly flustered. Why are you giving it to me? Elizabeth should pay, right? No, that's not the case. Mr. Smith began to explain with a serious face. I was consulted by Elizabeth regarding compensation claims against a cheating spouse. The payer is the party who cheated, which is you, James, right? Uh, 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 cheating? On what basis are you making such a claim? It's not so much a basis. We have all this evidence. Mr. Smith presented the infidelity report from the private investigator right in front of us. Seeing it, James was at a loss for words. When? When did you get this? I told James firmly. You can't claim compensation just because I stopped doing household chores. And I stopped because I found out about your affair. It's only natural not to want to serve someone who's been dishonest, right? But I can't pay such a high amount of compensation. Our savings are already low because you took out money from our account. And the amount you took is the same as what I spent on my affair. If you want it back, then you should return what you spent on your affair. How can I return it now? James seemed defeated, then suddenly became more submissive. Elizabeth, I apologize for the affair, but listen, the truth is, she and I have a child. I need money for the child. I can't lose money over this. This, I retorted. After betraying your wife for years, you have the nerve to say that? It's not like that. I just want to use all our savings for the child. Do you really plan to raise that child? Of course, it's my responsibility as a parent. You wouldn't understand since you don't have kids. Right, I certainly don't understand how you can raise someone else's child as your own. What do you mean by someone else's? The timeline of when you started seeing Lisa and the age of her child doesn't add up. Even if you don't have kids, you should know that much, right? That's not true. In his panic, James quickly called Lisa to his family home. She entered as if she owned the place. James, what's the important talk? Did you finalize the divorce with your wife? Seeing me, Lisa was taken aback. Why is she here? Ignoring her question, James confronted Lisa. Lisa, the child is mine, right? You said you even named the child after my middle name. Wait, what are you talking about? Of course the child is yours. Elizabeth had us investigated. She claims the child isn't mine and is demanding compensation. Compensation? Lisa glanced at the divorce papers and the compensation claim on the table. What's this? Elizabeth knows about us. We have to pay the compensation, but then I can divorce her and marry you. How much is the compensation? 50000 50000 But if we pay that, we can be a family. We'll figure out the money together. Lisa sighed deeply. <sighs> I'm done. What? I have no use for you if you're going to be broke because of the compensation. But the child needs a father. He'll go to his real father. Real? What do you mean? Lisa explained with a hint of annoyance. Like your wife said, the child isn't yours. I can't believe you were so easily fooled. Then whose child is it? It's the child of a customer I dated before I met you. I switched to you because you seemed richer. But it was a mistake. Your mother is annoying, and if you're broke, it's a total miscalculation. That's it. James was devastated, and so was Susan. My, my grandchild. Watching the two of them, Lisa laughed mockingly. You guys are idiots, aren't you? <laughs> the child has no blood relation to either of you. Anyway, I have no more business here. As Lisa tried to leave, I quickly stopped her. Hold on. I'll be claiming compensation from you as well. What? Why from me? I didn't have a child with James, so it's fine, right? Whether there's a child or not, you had an affair with a married man. You'll pay for that. This is ridiculous. 
Lisa, in anger, lunged at James. This is all your fault. Now I'm involved too. It's not just my fault. You knew I was a married man and still got involved. Susan joined in, siding with James. Yes, trying to deceive James into thinking he's the father. That's low. But Lisa wasn't one to back down. I spat back at them. Shut up! You should be thanking me for letting you feel like you had a grandchild. Pay me for that. What did you say? James, Lisa, and Susan started arguing, each pushing their own narrative, turning the house into a battlefield. Tired of their antics, I left the documents behind, entrusted everything to Mr. Smith, and left. Once home, I changed the locks and sent all of James' belongings to his family home. Then I called James. Oh, James, finish your chat with your mistress? Why did you leave? I couldn't stand listening to your ugly fight. I've relayed all my demands and Mr. Smith will handle the rest. I've broken up with Lisa. Let's start over. Broke up? You mean she dumped you? I don't want to start over with you. Please, I can't live without you. I can't live with you. I've sent your things to your family home. I've changed the locks. Don't come back. This can't be. We barely talk during the week because of work. You went to your family home alone on weekends. Nothing's changed. I needed you. If you needed me, you wouldn't have cheated. Stop making a fool out of me. We're done. Handle your things yourself. Without waiting for James's reply, I hung up. I blocked James' call so he had no way to reach me. Eventually, he gave in and paid the compensation as Mr. Smith instructed. With his savings gone, he couldn't even rent a new place. I'll soon settle the compensation claim with Lisa too. Meanwhile, I'm living comfortably in my spacious home without James. After some time, someone who genuinely cares about me appeared and I'm considering remarrying. I believe that this time, I'll have a happy married life. I'm moving forward with that hope in my heart.